Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ, and today I'm going to talk about how the SEC is trying to determine whether or not cryptocurrencies are a security or a currency. So given the rise of cryptocurrencies over the past decade and the significant rise in value over the past, let's say, year or two, cryptocurrencies are essentially mainstream now. This is something that pretty much everyone is talking about, and even people are talking about it that don't really understand how it works. And so pretty much everyone knows about Bitcoin, you know about Dogecoin, you know about Ethereum, and you may even know about a few other cryptocurrencies that are available at the moment. And you may also even know, especially if you watch my videos, that you can actually earn interest on some of your cryptocurrency holdings if you hold them with certain exchanges. And not only that, but if you were to use a stable coin, which is essentially just like holding cash, where you pretty much don't have any risk and you can exchange it one for one, one stable coin for one US dollar, and you can earn up to 8% with some of the available exchanges, kind of like earning interest on your savings account. But with the actual savings accounts with you know your typical big banks within the US, you're not earning even 1% with your savings account because interest rates are so low across the board. And so now even the average person who may not know a lot about different types of financial accounts, they're learning that you can actually own and hold cryptocurrency, or in this case, stable coins and get a high interest rate, way more than you could get with a traditional savings account or even an online savings account. And so with this rise in popularity, of course, there then comes scrutiny from the SEC and other government officials. They wanna know how to handle this because this isn't you know, part of the traditional banking and financial system in the United States. And it's growing in popularity, not only in the US, but across the globe as well. And over the past few months, regulation was even mentioned in the most recent infrastructure infrastructure bill, which supposedly had nothing to do with cryptocurrencies, but they decided to add something into that bill related to cryptocurrencies. So what's the big deal? Well, most recently, Gary Gensler, who is the SEC chair, most recently discussed cryptocurrencies and mentioned them as being a security and not a currency in relation to Coinbase thinking of launching their own crypto lending product on their website. And so a statement from Gary Gensler where he said, the use of stable coins on these platforms may facilitate those seeking to sidestep a host of public policy goals connected to our traditional banking and financial system, anti-money laundering, tax compliance, sanctions, and the like. And this was shortly after Coinbase talked about their plan to create their crypto lending product. This is actually a product that a few other exchanges like BlockFi already has a crypto lending program and the exchange Gemini also has one. And so it was very odd that they would respond this way in relation to Coinbase, considering that there are other companies that already have similar products available. But the main difference between Coinbase or the main difference I believe that they're talking about Coinbase versus BlockFi or Gemini and any other exchanges that may be out there and available is the fact that Coinbase is actually a publicly traded company. And so of course, as being a publicly traded company, uh, the government officials will look at you with more scrutiny. They will pay more attention to you. You're definitely in the mainstream because you are a publicly traded company. But one of the interesting things is, is that you don't actually need to use one of these three companies or what they call centralized exchanges, you could use a decentralized exchange and that's actually what Bitcoin was built for, to be de decentralized and not controlled by any particular government and giving access to anyone across the globe who actually has just an internet connection. And so what is clear now, especially with Coinbase being a publicly traded company, cryptocurrencies are being talked about daily on any financial news network that you either watch or that you read. And even you know your bus driver, your taxi driver, your Uber driver, you know someone at the grocery store, everyone's pretty much talking about some form of cryptocurrency, whether because they saw it in the news or one of their friends told them about it and talking about all the money that they've made, either from the growth of that cryptocurrency or from the interest that they're earning from holding uh, any particular cryptocurrency. And so while Coinbase doesn't seem to be looking to avoid any specific regulation, they do want to be a part of the conversation when those specific regulations or those laws are written and to make sure that those laws and regulations are spread across the board and every business that deals with cryptocurrency has to deal with those same regulations that they only seem to be focused on with Coinbase at the moment. And so in my opinion, for those who are really within the DeFi or the decentralized finance movement, 
These regulations probably won't matter much because the whole point of Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies was to be separate from our traditional banking and our traditional financial system. While so, some companies like Coinbase, Gemini and BlockFi and even other publicly traded companies who do not necessarily exchange Bitcoin but may be holding Bitcoin just as a way to hold their cash instead of holding it in cash, which is losing value by the day just from inflation. While cryptocurrencies may be increasing in value or at the very least holding their value and are now being thought of as a way to hold the value of instead of holding it in cash, especially with the super low interest rates that we currently have in 2021. And so while currently the US dollar is the main currency, of course, in the US, it is also the main uh, reserve currency throughout the globe. Some people believe that maybe one day Bitcoin or maybe even another currency will be that reserve currency. You can see in the news that recently the country of El Salvador has actually made it a legal currency, made Bitcoin specifically a legal currency in their country. And they purchased 400 Bitcoin valued at around $21 million back on September 6th of 2021. And so now it is official. It is a legal currency within their country. And I would assume that maybe in the future, other countries may adapt Bitcoin or, or other cryptocurrencies as a legal currency or maybe even the national currency for their country. And so whether we're talking about investment apps like Robinhood, whether we're talking about cashback apps like Pay, there are many fintech applications and many banks and many even credit cards which are providing the opportunity for you to use cryptocurrency, buy cryptocurrency, or earn cryptocurrency from the use of their products. So with the three exchanges that I've mentioned in this video today, Coinbase, BlockFi, and Gemini, I actually have a referral links which will be provided in the description below. So if you'd like to check out and you haven't used before, Coinbase, Gemini, or BlockFi. Make sure you use those referral links if you'd like to try out one of those exchanges. With Coinbase, you'll get free Bitcoin when you sign up and spend at least $100 purchasing Bitcoin, and the same with Gemini as well. And I actually already have a review of BlockFi if you'd like to check that out. And I plan on making a review video of Coinbase as well as Gemini in the near future. And so given this information, what are your thoughts on the SEC's view of Coinbase or of Bitcoin specifically as being a security and not a currency? If you are a current holder of any cryptocurrencies, are you using any exchanges that allow you to earn interest on your holdings? And if so, what specific exchange do you like to use, whether it's one of the three I mentioned or maybe another centralized or decentralized exchange? And in addition, do you see any other countries like El Salvador taking Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency and making that their either national currency or just making it an official currency within their country? And if so, what country do you think will be next? And so I'd love to see everyone's thoughts in the comments below. So make sure you leave a comment answering one of those questions. All right, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video just like this. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.